functional foods, health benefits beyond traditional nutrients. This is Jack Brook from Columbia Gorge Community College. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about in this session are uh, aspects of foods that have a health benefit or reduced risk of disease beyond the, their uh, vitamins and minerals and protein and so forth. And these are called functional foods. So what I'd like to do is go through uh, some examples of functional foods and talk about how they are of benefit to health. So by definition, a functional food is a food that has a health benefit beyond the traditional nutrients uh, they contain. So one example would be an unmodified whole food, which basically would be a food that contains these aspects naturally. And uh, so and these uh, aspects would have a physical benefit for example, we've, we've talked uh, in another session about phytochemicals, and these are chemicals that are found in plants that can be um, uh, anti-cancer, they can be antioxidants, uh, they can encourage your immune system, uh, those types of things. So they would be naturally in plant foods. Omega-3 fatty acids you may have heard are in fish, and they can have a beneficial effect on heart disease. Uh, reducing uh, LDLs and reducing plaque formation and that kind of thing. So they are naturally in high fatty type of fish foods like salmon and sardines and things. And then fibers that you'd find in plant foods that can reduce risk of colorectal cancers, can reduce risk of uh, diverticulosis and some gastrointestinal issues. So they would be uh, a benefit, but these again are natural in foods, but they're, they're not part of their nutritional um, content. Nutraceutical foods would be a little different in that these are foods that have had something added to them to either, in, you know, something that they have but enhance that amount or actually something they don't have that you would add to it. Uh, ca adding calcium to orange juice. Now, calcium is good for osteoporosis. Uh, and the reason they would put it in orange juice is because calcium likes an acid environment. You absorb a higher percentage of calcium uh, if it's in an acid environment. And so adding it to orange juice would be of benefit to that. But orange juice doesn't have a ton of calcium. So by adding it to it, it would be then under the classification of a nutraceutical. Uh, juices that have herbs like echinacea or something that maybe in, uh, enhances your immune system. So because it has that echinacea in it, then it would classify, be classified as a nutraceutical. Ergogenic additives, so additives to foods that would uh, give you more energy uh, and uh, maybe enhance performance would kind of come under the category. Now that doesn't mean that they actually work. Uh, that doesn't mean that an herb added to a juice actually uh, has been determined to be of any benefit. Um, I do believe that herbs are, are, have, are a benefit because they've been around for thousands of years, um, but I don't think the levels have been determined yet. Uh, the levels aren't, aren't uh, regulated by the FDA. And so there is no standard set for herbs. So the amount that uh, is needed to uh, enhance the immune system, I don't think has been uh, strictly determined yet, uh, but they, they do have suggested amounts. So that uh, may or may not be a benefit, but it's just the idea if they, if they do have a food or a juice or something that has an herb in it, then it falls under that category of nutraceutical or ergogenic things, things that would give you more energy. So, uh, so, you know, so barley green or um, some other additives that you'd have that say will make you uh, have more energy during the day would come under these categories. Probiotic foods, we hear a lot about probiotic foods. These are foods that uh, have live organisms in them. The more common one would be on uh, yogurt. So if you look at the label of yogurt, you'll see they have live cultures in them, mainly things like lactobacillus or bifidobacteria. Uh, but these would come under the classification of a probiotic food. 
because you're eating actually live organisms, which is a health benefit. Uh, these two are just pictures of um, the two types that you normally see. There are many types of lactobacillus, and so there's there's many um, different species that uh, have different benefits, uh, and so. Uh, you may see uh, different names and different types of lactobacillus on different cultures just for um, because they uh, not only uh, you know change the aspects of the food but they also uh, have a different health aspect to them bifidobacteria now bifidobacteria are kind of interesting because these are the bacteria that are 99 percent of the microflora or what makes up the bacteria in the gut of a of a breastfed infant or an infant that's being nursed. There is a factor in mother's milk that encourages the growth of these organisms uh, as a health benefit to reduce gastrointestinal uh, problems because they lower the acidity of the uh, their, the pH of the um, uh, gut of the of the infant, and so it reduces the growth of other bacteria in there that could cause some gastrointestinal problems. But these are probably the two main strains of organisms that you'll see in probiotic foods. Now the health benefits, um, we can uh, reduce pathogenic organisms in there in the gut and this is going to be in the large intestines. So if you don't know much about digestion, you know, the food goes in the mouth, through the esophagus, into the stomach, into the small intestines, and then in the large intestines is where these uh, probiotic bacteria are going to live and where they're going to hopefully thrive. And so these bacteria will uh, produce uh, substances that will inhibit the growth of pathogenic uh, organisms. Uh, and um, also reduce the attachment of these organisms to form little colonies on the GI tract on the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. So they um, discourage the attachment so they go out in the waste more and so you reduce the amount there. Um, it's hard to imagine that bacteria actually compete for space but they actually do and so by eating these bacteria now you're going to have to eat these probiotic bacteria probiotic bacteria every day so you uh, you have to continue eating them and, and adding them to your diet daily because if you don't then the other organs will eventually take over so these are something that once you start on probiotic therapy you're gonna have to continue that if you want the benefits of that because they you need to keep adding those organisms to compete for space they, as I mentioned, uh, they will reduce the pH of the gastron GI tract, uh, and that is good because uh, they will reduce the um, the environment uh, that pathogenic organisms like, and so they will allow them to grow. See, these organisms uh, usually like acid. That's why you know yogurt yogurt is acidic. And so they like that acid environment. So they do very, they're very comfortable with a lower pH. And uh, but the other pathogenic organisms, it, organisms do not like the lower pH, and so they will uh, be discouraged from growing. So other aspects that have been researched and found: decreased gastrointestinal cancers. Uh, increase calcium absorption because again calcium likes that acid environment increases mass increase so you uh, increases mass meaning you're going to excrete more uh, regularly which can reduce some gastrointestinal risk there decrease triglycerides uh, when would you use probiotic foods as a therapy uh, when you're taking chronic uh, antibiotics so if you're on antibiotics for a long time uh, one of the things your physician may have rec recommended is eating yogurt and that's because if it's a broad spectrum antibiotic it's going to kill the bacteria in your large intestines and if it kills those bacteria uh, then that's going to reduce some of the benefits that uh, they have in your, in your intestinal tract uh, one being production of vitamin K 
uh, which is involved in blood clotting and among other things, but you could have a problem with bleeding or something if you don't get enough vitamin K. So they encourage you to eat yogurt to just keep those organisms in your intestines uh, with that antibiotic therapy. Um, if you have constipation or diarrhea, you can um, uh, go on some probiotic therapy. Now you kind of need to know what you're doing because different organisms uh, <clears throat> will have different benefits. And so you need to know which organisms that you'd want to be taking as that therapy for <clears throat> either. I mean, they're going to be different if you have diarrhea versus constipation um, uh, or any other GI disorder. So you really need to talk to somebody who knows about this type of therapy so they can make recommendations on that. Uh, reduced immune response, uh, you know, if you're immunocompromised, like have HIV or something that's reducing your immune system, uh, these organisms uh, could in increase your immune system. But again, it's going to be different organisms that would do that. So talking to someone who uh, understands probiotic therapy would be very important. Prebiotic foods, now these are going to be foods that would encourage the growth of these organisms. Uh, and uh, these are going to be foods that these organisms love that would encourage their growth and therefore they could um, impart their health benefits by, by increasing their number. Um, but they have to be non-digestible because, uh, the, again, these organisms are in the large intestines. And so you have to get through the small intestines to get to the large intestines. So you don't want them to be digested before they get there because you want those uh, available for the organisms to munch on. Um, so you need them to reduce, reduce, resist digestion, meaning they're not going to be broken down. And then you want them to be fermentable, uh, meaning that the microflora are going to be able to use them as a energy source. And that's usually a fermentation, which is going to result in gassy uh, uh, aspects of this. So prebiotic foods are usually a gassy type of, uh, have a gassy result with that. So increasing flatulence. But there is a mantra in, in nutrition that a gassy bowel is a healthy bowel. Uh, so <laughs> you should um, be encouraged by that. And so Beano would not be uh, something that would be encouraged by somebody uh, on um, prebiotic type of food therapy, you know, trying to increase probiotics because you're going to defeat the purpose of those because Beano that you can purchase in a drugstore is, is basically an enzyme that will break down the carbohydrates and before they get to the large intestines. And then it reduces gas, but it doesn't encourage the growth of these organisms. Um, and then you want them to be beneficial organisms for the host's health. So you don't want them to hurt the, the host, which would be you. Uh, so they need to be beneficial. So these are some of the property of prebiotic foods. Um, not that you'll understand these terms, but these are uh, some prebiotic uh, carbohydrates that are found mostly in plant products. So another reason to eat plant products, I mean, we plant products have fiber, they have phytochemicals, and they will have these prebiotic uh, carbohydrates. And so very, you know, uh, very important to get uh, enough plant products in your diet. Um, then symbiotic foods would be foods that contain both uh, the probiotic organisms and the prebiotic carbohydrates. Uh, so you can find some food products out there, yogurts and specialized yogurts and stuff that would have both of those in there and you will actually see them uh, where they, they would say the, the type of bacteria plus FOS would be included on those. Um, but you can also buy uh, supplements that contain both of those too. Uh, you can buy uh, in you know through a a nutritional you know source that 
uh, you know, you might buy vitamins and minerals, they will have uh, prebiotic or probiotic supplements that you can purchase. The problem is that nobody knows, you know, how much you need to take. Uh, because on these supplements, you know, what you'll find is they have a potency that's in uh, colony forming units or CFUs, and these units come in billions uh, of organisms, and there's really no standard that's been set to know uh, how many billions are necessary to be of health benefit. Um, and so that's still kind of yet to come. Uh, as to uh, somebody really setting a standard as to, well, you really need 35 billion or you only need 10 billion or something like that. But you can purchase them. Um, there are definitely are health benefits to uh, probiotic organisms and so prebiotic foods would be important and there is some evidence that taking supplements of these would uh, improve uh, some aspects of GI health um, so it might be of some benefit uh, to research this and again find a health professional who knows something about it and get their suggestions and then go from there especially if you have issues with the, your gastrointestinal system I would very much encourage you to look into these because um, they might be a benefit to you so these are the functional foods I hope uh, that you've got some out of this that when you go and look for food products that you might be thinking about some of their additional aspects of these foods besides uh, uh, the normal nutrients uh, that you'd see on a food label and it will help you make better choices in your food.